Well, we just got back from picking up this new to me used trailer. It's a five by eight. It's a little dirty and it has rotted tires, but it's something we needed at the shop for a while. So let's get into it. So the previous owner told me that he bought the trailer in 2017 and didn't use it that much, which I can tell that it has low usage, but it looks like it's been sitting a while. We got dry rot all the way around these tires. This one's worse than the other one. Uh, so we are going to uh, just keep this just for emergencies. We're going to use the other one as the spare. And look what the stork brought us. Amazon stork brought us two brand new tires. Uh, these had, they, This brand, I never heard of it, Eco Trails, um, had good reviews. And the price was really good, especially with the tire and the rim combined. So uh, let's get that taken out. So I did check and the model matches what's on there. So we got the same size tire. These are uh, ST17580 D13s. So that's what we're rolling with. So these tires just have the standard powder coat white on here, very uh, thin amount. What we're going to do is add, uh, change the color a little bit and make it into like a, a bronzed, what is this, hammered bronze. I kind of found this left over with the uh, rest of the paint. So what we're going to do is clean it off and then uh, I'll show you a good way to mask it so you get somewhat of a good job on the paint in the rim with the tire on. So first thing I want to do is take some acetone and we're going to clean the rim off just to get any oils left over from manufacturing. That way at least it has the paint has a better chance of sticking. Now we're just doing spray paint so it's not going to be the best paint job on it but this is a trailer so it doesn't really matter. So we'll take some blue tape and cover the valve. And the trick that I like to do when I'm painting to keep the paint off the tire when you have a the rim on the tires, I take some index cards or business cards or playing cards, any type of stiff material and just kind of poke it in there and overlap them so that they stick. There's not much space between the rim and the tire like on bigger vehicles. We might have to tape it a little bit just to hold it up there so they don't fly away. It's kind of windy today too. The distance between the tire and the rim isn't as big as some of the other tires that I've done before and I can't get any cards, either the, the index cards or these plain cards to stick in there. Normally you could just jam it in there and it'd stick really well. So uh, since we can't do that, I'm just doing little sections of tape all the way around and then we'll put the cards behind it to uh, get any overspray. So that's what the direction we're going to have to go now. And then I use the card here and just kind of push it so it gets behind the rim a little bit, doesn't stick out. Yeah, there you go, it's going much faster on this. So we've got both tires prepped and ready to go. I think a good paint job, no matter how cheaply it's done or uh, how, much, how less effort it takes to do, is the preparation at the beginning. That's what takes more time than painting, but also reading the directions to your spray paint. This particular company, uh, a lot of people have complaints about different companies. This one in particular, you got to read the directions. It says you need to recoat within one hour or after 48. So if it's an hour and a half or two hours after and you think, oh, I need to put another coat on it or I forgot, then uh, don't do it because it's going to crinkle your paint. You're going to have to strip it all the way back down. Uh, wait for the full two days, even three days before I'd put another coat on. So that's the limitations of using these type of uh, paints. There are other type of spray cans, paints that do better and are, are more forgiving. But uh, if you read directions and know how to use it, then I think you'll get a, uh, a good coat out of any spray paint. Just know how to use it. That's what it's just experience. Alright, let's get set up and we will start the paint. So the first coat 
just go lightly. Even if you miss some spots so you can see the white through it, it's okay. Just get a nice even coat. That's what you want to do on the first one. Second coat, you can fill in any missed spots. But just keep it light. I think that's a good color. And we got a pretty good coat. So I'm going to let this sit for about 30 minutes. And I'll come back and put a second coat on. So it's been 15 minutes. And the can says it will be dry to touch in about 15 minutes. Which it is. So, and it's right now, it's Georgia hot humidity. It's probably like 80 and it's humid. And I think it's been out in the sun. That helps uh, dry quicker. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put a second coat on here. And then that will be it for uh, painting the, the wheels. And then we'll get them installed after probably 24 hours. While we wait for the rims to dry, well, let's go ahead and uh, take this opportunity to get all the moss and the dirt off of the trailer before we start installing the new rims and tires. Since the trailer had been sitting for many years, you could see that there's a lot of growth of moss and dirt on the frame. So I think what we're going to do is get out the pressure washer, use one of my favorite tools, the soap cannon, and see if we can get this done in, uh, without scrubbing. Now let's do a quick change and rinse this thing off. So when I'm doing smaller jobs and I don't want to pull out the gas uh, powered pressure washer. I just pull out the cheap little electric 1600 uh, max PSI pressure washer and it does, does just well cleaning stuff like this. So as the water dries you can see all that moss is gone with just a little bit of soap and water. Now you can see how fa faded the paint is but I mean it's a trailer. What do you expect? But I'm happy with it. Just a little bit of soap, a little bit of pressure washing and we're as good as new. So the rims are dry and ready to be put on. So what we're going to do is use our half inch electric impact gun that we got from an estate sale. You can see that video where we got it listed down below. But since this is electric, I want to do an experiment. I mean, I'm right by the shop, so I mean, I could easily get an extension cord and plug it in. But instead of doing that, I decided to pull out another estate sale find, which was the uh, our mini generator. This generator is 800 watts and works great for toting around uh, the farm and using uh, electric tools. We've got the wheel onto the axle uh, with the lug nuts hand tight. We lowered it down and now we are going to set the uh, torque specs uh, from the manufacturer. It goes from 55 to 75. So we'll start with 55 and then we'll go up to 75. Uh, that's 75 foot pounds and then we should be good to go. All right, we've got both tires on. They're torque to spec and we've actually got an uh, extra tire too that we can use as a spare. We just have to create a holder that we will mount to the tongue in a future date. Well for our experiment of the electric impact wrench and the generator, the uh, definitely proved to be successful and will be good for any 
backcountry repairs that need to be done. I know this isn't as light as uh, using a battery powered uh, tool, but I think it would be a little bit more efficient uh, because you don't have to charge up batteries. You just turn it on and go. I think for now our shop trailer is uh, roadworthy and good to go. We'll definitely use it in many projects to come. So remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here.